So opportunistic anti-gun politicians that want to undermine Second Amendment rights strip you of that ability and make our country altogether worse by promulgating lies. The leading cause of death of American children is gun violence. Now, this is opportunistic and it's on the coattails of this Lewiston, Maine shooting. Every time there's a mass shooting, the White House immediately grabs that opportunity to push through the disarming of citizens, which of course will make everything worse. How do you know that? Because everything the White House touches turns to utter crap. Exhibit A, our country. So here's Kamala Harris. She's going to go through a speech. Some of its political speak will contradict paragraph by paragraph and go through it. Here she is. Last night, Lewiston became yet another community torn apart by senseless gun violence. So I don't like this term gun violence. It's a misnomer. If somebody is bombed, they don't say bomb violence. If somebody gets in a fist fight, you don't say hand violence today. But why is it gun violence? It's a rhetorical device by anti-gunners that are made you to attach the word violence, something bad, to guns and they put it together as if it's the it's the gun that does it not the human don't fall for it it's not gun violence it's just violence once again routine gatherings this time at a bowling alley and a restaurant have been turned into scenes of horrific carnage Doug and I mourn for those who were killed we pray for those who were injured and grieve with so many whose lives are forever changed and impacted by what happened. Pause. I don't believe for one moment that this woman prays. If she's praying, it's to like the universe or to herself or something like that. Contrite submitting to a holy sovereign God. Not for a moment do I believe that. We must continue to speak truth about the moment we are in. In our country today, the leading cause of death of American children is gun violence. And here's the big lie. It is an absolute lie that guns are the major cause of kids dying in the U.S. Absolutely not true. Now, what they do is they monkey with the data to give the result that they really want. So first thing they'll do is they'll exclude all deaths of kids of one year old and under. It's like, well, why don't those count? We don't really get a good answer. Then they also include adults that are aged 18 and 19. Now, 18 and 19 years are always adults until it's time to get crime stats for firearm related deaths. And now 18 and 19 year olds are mysteriously included. Why? We don't know. But gang violence is included in this number. Gang violence for adults. Suicides are included. Including suicides is incredibly misleading because you think of like, oh, these are killings that are being done by others. You think of homicides. But when you include all ages, suicides are over 50% of all gun-related deaths in the U.S. That means in 2021, 49,000 gun deaths for all ages in the United States would be shrunk down to about 21,000, according to a report by Pew Research. By the way, of that whole number, only about 3% of that number is related for rifles or AR-15s. AR-15s, for sure, statistically, factually, objectively, not the problem. Now, going back to gun deaths relating specifically to children, justifiable homicides are also included in that number. That means, let's say, because of our open border, gangs are flooding into the country, pushing up our gun homicide deaths, and cops do good cop things, and they end up putting down some of these gang members. So that means gang violence, adults being included in the category, suicides, and justifiable homicides. That means cops putting down people. All that is packed into this number. And let us be clear, it does not have to be this way. Now, when you take all those out, you find leading causes jump ahead of gun-related deaths. Now you'll see by far more kids are killed by things like vehicles or some type of medical problem or even suffocation goes above gun-related deaths. Now, while we're on the subject of what's killing the most kids in the U.S., let me tell you the blatantly obvious one. Abortion by far claims the most deaths for kids. There isn't even a close second. It is hard to get the actual numbers because these numbers are covered up, particularly with the advent of the abortion pill. But if you really drill down and you look at the numbers, it's probably one out of every four babies are killed through abortion in the United States. In some cities, it's way higher. 
That means the most dangerous place for you to be in the United States. It isn't in a bowling alley and it isn't in a movie theater. It's actually in your mother's womb. You have a 25% chance of her murdering you. It does not have to be this way. As our friends in Australia have demonstrated. Now, to add insult to injury, our White House would like to look to other countries as if they're doing a far, far better job than we are per capita with gun violence. And it's just frankly not true. The moment you do a gun ban, homicides skyrocket. In 1997, when the UK banned handguns, they saw a 50% immediate increase in homicide-related deaths. And it'll take eight years for them to take that number back to normal levels, and they'll only do it with an increase in police, something to the tune of like 14%. In places like Jamaica or, or Ireland, they saw a six or seven times increase in gun-related deaths due to homicide. So it turns out when you ban firearms, all you end up effectively disarming is the good guys. And the good guys not standing up with their own protection, the bad guys run amok and homicides shoot through the roof. Now, what are the actual numbers of how many kids are actually dying from gun-related causes in the United States? Once you remove justifiable homicides, according to the FBI in 2021, the numbers go from 3,405 down to 2,112. It's 2,000 kids. Now that's bad, but remember if you ban guns, how much more kids are going to be killed, especially in gun violence when the communities aren't even there to protect themselves. We just saw this over in Israel where entire neighborhoods due to Israel disarming its own citizens, Hamas was able to land, come through, went through 22 different small cities and towns where they were largely disarmed and they were just shooting fish in a barrel. What would have happened if the people in those towns actually had had some way of recourse? What happens if they had guns and they were able to fight back? Man, we have blood on our hands in the US, blaming the wrong things. We open our borders, gangs flood through, they kill each other, we include them in our stats, and we spin a narrative as if gun homicides that are unjustifiable or accidental are screaming out of control so that anti-gunners can end up undermining the Constitution to seize all guns and get a monopoly on violence. This is how they take over. They create a problem, they blame it on you and I, and then they seize all the guns so they can have totalitarian control and there's no recourse that we can do about it. And we fall for it, like a bunch of morons, listening to their paid off media outlets spin their lies. Well, here's truth, share it far and wide. Don't fall for it, don't give up your guns. You are sacred protectors and forces for good in a world that has gone wrong and evil and that evil doesn't sleep and it does bad things. And so you and I will stand in the gap. Cheers to you, warrior poets.